I need a bigger garage, but it's a confusing mess, isn't it? Don't get overwhelmed, it's not that bad. This is the wiring harness off the donor bike, your standard Japanese motorcycle wiring harness. We can use all of this for our e-bike, and we really don't even need any more wiring. We just have to know what to throw away and what to keep. It's gonna be pretty easy. It looks confusing, but we're gonna go through each part. I'm first gonna cut this harness open and get rid of that tape, and then we can walk through and see what we don't need. What is that? We don't need that. That's a speedometer and a tachometer. We're not gonna need that. We're gonna need that headlight. That's for damn sure. How about the horn? We're gonna need that. I hate these rubber boots. I can't believe the guy at Yamamoto hasn't been fired yet for making them. I'll show you the biggest mistake you're gonna make. You've got a fuse box and you've got the battery going to the fuse box. It goes to the battery to the positive side. So the natural assumption is that's where you hook your 12 volt converter to this wire. That will convert everything on here to 12 volt, but it won't because you're gonna remove a starter relay. We're not gonna need a starter relay. The battery actually goes to the starter relay. The starter relay on the same peg, this would be this one over here, it shares with the same wire that goes to the key switch. And the key switch is that little red one right there. I don't have the key on there, but. So essentially, the hot wire goes from the battery. It's gonna send 12 volts to that key switch, but it does it with this relay in the way. You take your two wires off the relay, remove the whole relay system. You're gonna have to go from the 12 volt converter, not to the one going to the fuse box. We don't need that one anymore, but to the one going to the key switch, and that's important. So that's the one we're gonna keep, is that wire coming off the starter relay to the key switch. Now there'll be another wire on the starter relay, and it goes to the starter. We don't need that. But the wire that goes to the wire bundle is the one we're gonna keep, and that's the one that we're gonna use for our input. It's not gonna be hooked to the battery. That's what's gonna confuse you. It's gonna be hooked to the starter relay. The wire going from the starter relay to the battery is a throwaway wire, and that's this one here. And I know it looks important because it's on the fuse box, but that's okay. This part of the fuse box, or this fuse, that goes to the starter relay is almost a whole separate system. It's not part of the fuse box. So if you take your fuse box, and this side's hot, all these are hot, but not this one. That's the starter relay one. So we're gonna remove this from our system. We'll, we'll still keep it. It's gonna be on the fuse box, but we're gonna get rid of those two wires. We don't need that one going to the starter relay, because remember, we've got the one going to the switch over here. Then the other one that comes off there was feeding this whole system to charge our battery, and it comes off the rectifier regulator on the stock bike. This is taking AC input, AC volts from the stator, and it's turning it into that red wire, and it's feeding 12 volts DC into the system via that starter relay. It's not going into this. So it goes from the rectifier regulator, it goes out to the relay, from the relay to the key switch. When we turn the key switch on, the orange wire becomes hot. The orange wires come back in and feed all your stuff. That's your 12 volt system is these orange wires. But to get power there, the red wire. So we can get rid of this. We don't need it. That's gone. That rectifier regulator is not needed. Trash. The starter relay is not needed. And you'll have a wire going to the starter relay, which is from the start switch. And that's okay, get rid of it, leave it in the bundle, trash. The battery, we don't need, trash. Now, it's getting simpler. Now we're gonna go through this thing and see what everything does and if we need it or trash it. But it's just important to understand those key points about how the power comes into the system so you don't make the mistake. This is how we're gonna bring power into the system is that wire going from the starter relay to the key switch. And there's the key switch right there. Your donor bike may have a CDI, capacitor discharge ignition, or it may have points. This one originally had points, someone converted to CDI. So it'll have a CDI box. That's gonna basically tell the plug when to fire. That can be removed. We don't need it. It'll have wires going into the engine, go to a pulse sensor on the crankshaft or the magneto, the flywheel, it's gonna know the timing to tell the box when to release the signal. You're gonna have an orange wire going in there because it's DC fired. That's our 12 volt DC. Remember the orange wires are 12 volt DC usually. And that's gonna be storing the 12 volt DC. When it gets told to release it, it's gonna release it into these wires. And those wires, if you follow them up, they go to a coil. You might have one to four coils on your bike, but we don't need them. So we can get rid of the coils. Trash. I wouldn't actually trash them. I would sell them on eBay. And we can get rid of this CDI box. We don't need it. 
trash. I always mark my wires with what they are, even if I don't need it, because when I go through here and clean my harness up and get rid of everything, I'm gonna get rid of all these wires and I'll forget what that plugs into. Then I'll know I can remove it and I can get rid of the wires all the way up to wherever they go. Look how much simpler it already is. So now that we've got rid of the rectifier regulator, the stator, the coils, and the CDI or points, it's just a matter of going through and seeing what you want and don't want. Tail light and rear blinkers. The blinkers are on the bike still, but obviously we want those. I may not use this tail light, but I definitely want those connections, so I mark them all. And now I've got my outlets that I can just plug my new cool stuff into. You're gonna have a brake light. This is one that the brake pedal set off. There'll be another one up front for the handlebar. We definitely want the brake light. Those are handy to have, don't have to wire that. Like I say, we don't have to do any wiring with this thing. The wiring is all here. It's a really good deal to find a bike with a good wiring harness that hasn't been molested. So I'm gonna use this brake light for sure on my wiring harness. You're gonna come across a box that looks something like this. It might be round, it might be smaller. But what it will have is an offset looking prongs. Either it'll be three prong or two prong. That's gonna be your flasher. You wanna have that. And it may not work with your LED lights, but that's okay. You just get an LED flasher, no big deal. But at least you know which wires go to the flasher because these go from your power source. They turn into a flashing signal and go all the way to your switch and they're used for your blinkers. And that way, whenever you send power to your blinkers, it sends a flashing signal. And we're keeping the fuse box, obviously even though these two don't do anything here, but you can use those two between the power input and that red wire going to the key to protect the system. Even though it may be 96 or 72 volts, that fuse is based on amps, it'll still work. But these are not hooked to the main system. If you have wires coming off and going to the engine like this, they're gonna be a temperature sensor or your oil pressure sensor, and that's all they'll look like. They'll go to the motor get rid of that wire you'll never use it it goes up to the dash and gives you an oil light or it displays your water temperature this right here this is a gas tank sensor that tells you your gas level it's like this one only has a ground and the signal wire i mark it gas tank i take it off throw it away as i'm going up the harness we're going to end up with all these wires we don't need like the starter relay the coil wires that engine temperature sensor wire but some of the stuff we come across we're going to keep the wires so for example that orange wire going to the cdi box was a 12 volt constant source when the key was on that i can use for led lights stereo something like that something else i may want it's a good power source it goes through the protected fuse box we're not going to get rid of every wire we come across if you come across an orange wire universally that's a good outlet that's a hot that's going to be 12 volts. In the same way, usually a black wire with a white stripe is going to be your ground. So here's a good hot and ground combo right there for sure. So we don't want to get rid of all the wires, just what we know we're not going to use. Going further up, we come to the handlebars. You got the right handlebar with the throttle. It's got a start switch. That was this one here, starter relay. But that's important. We may want to keep that. When you press that, it sends 12 volts to this. And that's pretty cool. And it's got a kill switch. Those are nice switches. You may want to keep these switches. You can pull this apart, get rid of the throttle, and just keep that switch housing. You might want to use this as a reverse, and you might want to use this as something else. Maybe lights. Who knows? But mark what they go to. Personally, I'm going to take this whole side off. I'm not going to use it, so I'm going to get rid of it. I am going to use the left side. Low beam, high beam. Left and right, and I've got my horn. Those are all things I need. So this will stay with the harness, but something's going on here. When you jump a switch like that, there's a reason why. I could be pulling my power from this switch into this switch, and I wouldn't have any power to feed these things. Because if you notice, there's no orange wire. There is an orange wire going into the throttle side. Orange is usually where your power comes from. Probably goes through this kill switch and then turns this switch on. You may wire up your bike and your switches don't work and you don't know why. So just keep that in mind when you're taking everything apart mark this switch since i'm not going to use this throttle side i may have to feed 12 volts to this independently to get this whole switch system to work so i'm going to mark this i suspect it's 12 volts from the other switch and i don't think this is providing 12 volts to that side and the reason why is if the switch came loose while you were riding and fell apart that would be hot bouncing around on steel and grounding out and causing a fire and a short but if you notice the one it came out of is covered in plastic that's probably the hot one. That way, if it comes apart while you're riding down the road, it's protected by that casing. 
and mark it just how you know it from a throttle side. I think it's a 12 volt source from the kill switch, but I don't know that. So I'm not going to put kill switch or 12 volts or anything like that because I'll forget about all this when I go to wire this thing. And if it has kill switch or anything like that, it'll throw me off. Moving on up, we get to a horn. We definitely want that. It's already wired. It already goes to a button over there. Yeah, what more could you ask for? We're going to keep the horn. We get up to the front of the bike. I've got the key switch. We're going to use that. Left and right blinkers. That's all normal. And then I've got this thing here. This is the clutch safety switch. So I'm going to tape these together just in case I need it. This clutch switch can screw you. Right now the clutch is open. This is so you pull your clutch in before you start your bike. With the clutch pulled in like it is now, there's continuity between the two wires, these two here. But when the clutch is not pulled in, the continuity goes away. So if you simply disconnect these clutch wires like I've done because we're not going to use a clutch and you throw that away, these two wires need to be plugged into each other to have continuity. I won't need it because I'm not going through the kill switch, but if you're going to use that right hand lever with the kill switch and the start switch maybe for something, this disables them. So you want to take these, keep them in your harness and put them together. And that's going to make your bike think the clutch is pulled and you'll have power. And it only powers that starter relay wire. It sends power to this wire here that goes to the starter relay. If you're gonna use that wire, then you're gonna need that. So just remember to check your clutch and you may have to wire it together. But it's an e-bike, it's not gonna have a clutch, so we can throw that away. Yeah, things that can trick you up are tip over switches, clutch safety switches, brake safety switches, not just the brake lights, and kickstand safety switches. There's even neutral safety switches, but most of those switches only disable that starter button. So here's my blinkers, and we get up here to the headlight. It goes to a switch, it's already wired. It will already have the relay if one's needed, or the gauge of the wires will be big enough to handle that 55 watt light. There's the brake switch from the right handlebar, the front brake switch, you want that. And then we get to this instrument cluster. Speedometer, gas gauge, RPM, oil lights. There's that light we talked about, the oil, the turn signals. Neutral side stand, it does have one, and right turn. Oh, and a gear position indicator up top. At first you would think we don't need any of this. Toss it away. But we actually do need some stuff in here. We need some of these wires. Let's determine what the wires are first. This set of wires here go to, this is probably power going into it, but this went to the engine. It comes off the side of the transmission. That's your gear position signal. And there's a lot of wires going to there, but we're not going to need any of them. Now this wiring harness here, I just marked this that it goes to the instrument panel. I don't know what they do. I don't know what these do. I have no idea, but these two are both marked instrument panel. And that's important. I'm going to throw this away. What makes these important, and you'll need a multimeter to figure out which ones they are, once you get your wiring harness on your bike and start putting it together, there's wires in here that you want if you're doing a DKD display. In here is your high beam indicator, your left turn signal, and your right turn signal. So you've got three wires out of all these that you definitely want for your DKD display. You'll have to use a multimeter and test which ones they are, turn your turn signal on, see which ones light up. It's that simple. See which ones give you 12 volts. You can even just use a test light for that. So that's it. And that's the whole wiring harness. That's all there is to it. So now it's not that big of a deal. It's just this. That's it. And I haven't even removed all the excess wires yet because I don't need those wires going to the CDI box, coils, things like that. I'm trying not to throw too much at you at once. So now let's loop back to this red and black wire that I said is going to the converter. It's actually not. I just didn't want to make it more confusing. Let's look at this key switch. It's going to have that red wire going into it. That's the wire we took off that relay going to the switch. When you turn that key on, it's most likely going to turn all three of these on. I haven't hit it with a multimeter test yet, but this is what I've normally found. This would be your most typical situation. It may only turn one of them on. And the two brown wires might be for some kind of alarm. So when you turn the key off, the two brown wires are connected. I feed 96 volts, 72 volts, wherever my big battery is, to the key switch. This is how I do it. I do that so I can use my key switch to turn on the controller. The controller needs the volts that come from the battery, whether it be 72 or 96. It needs that voltage going to it to turn the controller on. Also, the DKD display you're going to use is going to require that same battery voltage so it can tell you how many volts it has. To get it to do that, when I turn the key switch on, I have 96 volts going into my key switch. Into right here, I run my 96 volts or 72 volts into these two wires. 
I turn the key switch on with that. Out of the key switch, I'm taking that to the DKD display. I'm taking that to the key wire going to the controller. And then I'm also taking it to this converter. So when this orange wire comes back here to my fuse box, probably this one here, because it's got the burned up part on it, overheated. I'm just gonna guess it was this one, but I'll have to find out. So this orange wire going to my fuse box will be 96 volts. I will cut this. And here's where I will convert it into 12 volts. Now I have 96 volts going into here, and then I'll also run 96 volts into here. It'll come out as 12 volts. So this orange wire coming from the key switch, if this is the one, I haven't found out yet, will be hooked to here. Then this yellow wire will go into the fuse box where that one came out, like that. This wire will be gone, of course. That's no longer there. I'm gonna cut it, put that there, this here, and I'm turning the 96 volts from the key into 12 volts and feeding my fuse box. It's nice to turn your key on and have everything come on. And that's how I want it. So this will not go to the converter. The converter is gonna happen over here, right before the fuse box. I just always save telling people that for last so I don't confuse them with the first part of it. And I say both wires, but only the red wire is gonna go there with the 96 volts. So I've marked that one 96 volt to key. That's gonna get the system started. It's gonna turn to 12 volts over here. And this is my 12 volt ground, my common ground. We won't have any engine grounds, so we won't have any chassis grounds. The ground's gonna be self-contained, it's gonna be floating. So if you have something old school, like let's say this blinker right here, and it only has a hot wire and it uses the chassis as a ground, you're gonna have to add a ground wire. Now the ground going to the battery can go right to the converter. You can't use the frame as a ground. I mean, you can. Matter of fact, that frame is grounded right now. It's for a whole different difficulty problem. The two grounds from the 96 volt system and the ground from the 12 volt system, they end up sharing each other's ground. And you can't help it. It happens in the converter. So what happens is, if you're touching 96 volts and then touch that frame, you will get shocked. Also, you could get 96 volts to go into your 12 volt system and it does some damage. It cost me a new controller because of that common ground. I also blew up one of these Android Auto things all because of this frame is grounded. Grounding your frame is a really bad idea and it cost me probably seven, eight hundred dollars for the controller and the display, nothing I can do. I just gotta eat it because no one's gonna admit fault. The truth is this engine was defective from the factory. I talked to China. I did actually get them to admit it was defective. They sent me parts to fix it. And I have no freaking idea how to fix that. So I'm just aware that's a ground and I've got these parts. Maybe I'll try to figure it out and make a video on it. They should have sent me a new motor. They didn't. Typical China. There it is. That's it. I know it looks ridiculous, that big bundle right there. But on a 70s and early 80 bikes like this, they used to hide a whole wiring harness behind the headlight. It was a nightmare. So everything went behind the headlight and then it went out to the various areas. And I'm gonna put all that wiring, I really didn't wanna cut it up. I'm gonna put it under the tank. My gas tank is totally fake. It's just a big hollow shell. I couldn't fit the controller under it, so I'm gonna use that just to hide all that wiring. And the wiring from the key switches, the switches, things like this, they're pretty long. It's all long enough to get back underneath the tank. But I've got all those plugs right here. That's the key switch, the blinkers, the brake light, the handlebar control switch and then the other control switch should I need it and then I've got the headlight going out long enough that it'll go past the forks and into the headlight. In this bundle of crap I've kept all those plugs going to the instrument panel just in case I ever put a DKD display on here I'll have it. And then I have my lead coming off to bring 96 in. I have a ground coming off to hook to the 12 volt ground and then I'll hook the 12 volt positive converter to whichever wire I figure out it is coming from the key. Yeah, that'll go into the tank too. And then all this goes to the back of the bike. I'll probably have to add wiring in to get to the tail lights and everything. And the wiring harness will all be hidden under the tank. Headlights out to the front. Be zip tying and finding places to mount all this stuff. I have a lot of little screw holes and stuff to mount things. Tail light portion will go out to the tail, obviously. It's not long enough. When you buy your tail lights and everything from AliExpress, they come with pretty long wires, so it might make it. I won't add it yet till I need it. The tank will go on top of that. Gonna look cool. 